Good afternoon. Welcome to the Unto Theo Lord Ministries channel. Please subscribe, like, and share. Please consider contributing to the ministry for our primary ministry is to help the ones in jail or in nursing home. And when we go to those local jails and nursing homes, we need Bibles and other printings to hand out to these that are so often overlooked. Please help us reach these needed souls. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the video description. We are also looking to partner with a few Christian businesses as an affiliate. Look into the video description for hyperlinks. Thank you. Good evening, friends, neighbors, brothers, and sisters in Christ. Thank you for coming to the Unto the Old Lord Ministries YouTube channel. In this video, let's talk about the two unforgivable sins. Yes, I said two, didn't I? The first one is in effect right now. And it has been for sure at least starting at the point in which Christ spoke these words. It is likely that it was in effect before then, but for sure, when Christ spoke these words. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 12, verse 32. Again, that is Matthew 12, verse 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Did you hear that? Whosoever speaketh against the Holy Spirit, Spirit or the Holy Ghost. I know some people prefer one term or the other, but in the King James it states Holy Ghost. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Okay. We need to be careful here. I have just thought of a verse. Let me let, let me look it up real fast. Um, it is okay to test. Okay, in Judges 6, verses 36 through 40, let's look at that. Judges 6, 36 through 40. Because remember, it, Satan can deceive us and we need to make sure we are speaking with the Holy Spirit okay I'm in Judges 6 and here we go 36 and then Gideon said unto God if thou wilt save Israel by mine hand as thou hast said behold I will put a fleece of wool in the floor and if the dew be on the fleece only and it be dry upon the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. And it was so, for he rose early on the, on the morrow, and th thrust the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece and, um, and upon the ground. 
let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Okay. It is okay to test to make sure we are speaking to the right person. Once we know, then there is no doubt. There is no doubt. And so going back to Matthew twelve thirty two. The King James says, Speaketh against others, say, uh, instead uses the term blaspheme. Okay? As a matter of fact, I probably ought to do a Greek word search on that. Matthew. Let me get back to it. Matthew twelve thirty two. And uh, let's do a little bit of a Greek word search on this. Okay. And come on. <sighs> Speaketh against a primary verb used only in the uh, past, the definitive past tense, to speak or say or by word or or by writing oh come on okay the, that of the g2036 is, is truly speaking of the speak and against that is the greek word g2 Five nine six, that of the uh, kata, a primary particle to mean down in varied relations with which is joined about according as after against loan. So then it is basically talking down or to let me read on here or against against own particularly through uh oops okay so then basically if you talk down to or if you claim something that the Holy Spirit really didn't tell you, that is blasphemy. Je Jesus was also accused of that same blasphemy whenever he said that he is the Son of God, at which we now know he is, but at the time that of the Pharisees and the it is well, well it's just Sadducees was was about to pick up stones and stone him to death because he claimed to be the son of God and at one time whenever he said before Abraham was I am that was saying that he was God at Mount Sinai Take a look at Exodus 3.14 for that. Okay. So there are two ways to commit this type of sin. Saying that the Holy Spirit told you something or to talk down on the Holy Spirit. Like as if the Holy Spirit is beneath you your own slave although that is a bad way in a putting it that is how some people treats the holy spirit 
and they will have to answer to it. Now the second sin. It has not even started yet, so nobody has even done this second unforgivable sin yet. What sin am I talking about? Let's go to the book of Revelation. Yes, you figured it out. I was heading to the book of Re Revelation when I said it hasn't occurred yet. Okay. Revelation 14 and verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Verse 11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they shall have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and the image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. See, this is why it is important to know who the Antichrist is, what is his mark, and other necessary things so we don't receive that mark. Let me say it again. In 14.11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of the beast. Okay. On a small side note here. Some people want to try to say that hell is forever and ever. Well, I first have to ask them, which hell are you talking about? And I will make that of a different video on that. But this verse says, the smoke of their torment. Keep that in mind. It isn't saying that their torment but the smoke. What is smoke? It is what is left over after something burns. Okay. Now, back to the second unforgivable sin. Let's now go just a few chapters over. Revelation 16, 2. That is Revelation... 16 and verse 2 and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image so if you're going to take the mark and worship the image you are going to have bad sores. Let's now go to, I believe it is Revelation 20 and 19. Oh, wrong spot. Oh, I have had it, I have had it backwards. Revelation 19, verse 20. Okay. 19 and verse 20. This also explains the same thing. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Okay. Them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast into the lake of fire. 
it is important that we do not receive that mark or worship that image. Yet I've said it twice now. And that is the second sin. That is the second unforgivable sin. But so that we know that second unforgivable sin, we have got to know who the Antichrist is. See my video number two, The Antichrist. As I have mentioned before, that I could have gone for over 50 hours going into detail. And I am available as a guest speaker to speak on that. So if your congregation is looking for someone that can keep it scriptural and keep it historical of the full explanation of the Antichrist, get in touch with me and we will set up date and time for me to come as a guest speaker. All right. Thank you and have a blessed day.